was great. The book of Daniel, the sixth chapter. Thank you for being here. Thank you for standing. It's good to see Brother Lonnie Helms home visiting. Amen. His granddaughter. Amen. It's good to see you and all our guests today. And we're so thankful for uh, the mercy of God. Uh, whether you recognized it or not, or not, or sensed it or felt it, maybe you failed to remember it. But just let me one more time remind you that this morning when you awoke, there were new mercies that were in store for you this day. You may have felt like that you depleted, exhausted all hope yesterday. But today is a new day with new mercies. And his grace is sufficient. Even in our weakness, his strength is made perfect, the word said. I will rather therefore glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. Your greatest weakness today, your greatest fault, your greatest failure that you can seem to come up with in your mind cannot supersede the great grace of God. Uh, no matter how bad you think you are, no matter how terrible your life may have been, your, your pedigree or your past, can I tell you that the grace of God, uh, the grace of God can cover a multitude of sins. And I am so thankful for that. Anyone else today? Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed in verse number 10 of Daniel, the sixth chapter, now when he knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees there three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. When Daniel knew, he went to his house, he opened his windows, he kneeled down, he prayed, just as he did before. Amen. I want to talk to you about the place where I pray. The place where I pray. Father, I love you and I love your word and I thank you for your great goodness and grace to us this day and your presence that I feel in this house. And I pray that you would help me to preach this word and anoint me and this people, thank you, God, for your anointed word that we are saved by your blood, by your name, by your word. Thank you, God, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, God, for truth today. And we worship you and we glorify you. Be exalted now, I pray. Would you lift your voice in thanksgiving, church? God, we are grateful to you today. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you for your mercy. I love you, Jesus. I am thankful for everything, God, and I put my trust in you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, would you greet four people? Count them down. Four people and be very nice to them. Be very kind. Look at something about them and compliment them. Would you do that? 500 miles from Jerusalem. That is about how far Babylon was from the place of all places for Israel. 500 miles carried away to captivity. Slaves and servants in a strange land. That's how far Daniel was from home. He, he, he probably never thought, now walk with me for a moment, would you? He probably never thought that his life would end up there. Probably never thought that it would be the way that it was, because the truth of the matter is none of us ever do. It's not to say that Life is bad and does not have its moments on the mountains, but no one ever plans for the disappointments or for the low valleys of defeat along the way. We wake up on certain days of our life and, and we find ourselves feeling 500 miles from where we thought we would be and wanted to be. Yes, we do. And like a Daniel, when we feel like a stranger in a strange land, we have to determine at those defining moments who it is that we will be. We will become bitter or we will become better because of it. For the truth is, the truth is often the places that we are put in do not change. So we have to decide where we are going to then place ourselves instead. Daniel was first, the Bible said, the one that was favored above all the other presidents and princes. He was first. And he was first because 
He had an excellent spirit, the word said. Look at this, please. Um, A right spirit will put us in places of blessing even when we are surrounded by opposition. It wasn't talent. It wasn't a talent or, or intelligence that was said of Daniel in the word. It wasn't the accolade that was given to him that said that he was first above all the other presidents and princes. No. It wasn't that that put him there, but rather it was simply an excellent spirit. An excellent spirit put Daniel in the first place as president. When our flesh fails us, please someone hear me, when our flesh fails us, a right spirit can sustain us. Certain things may affect your flesh, but you do not have to let them poison your spirit. The presidents and princes no doubt envied him and and sought to find an occasion, some transgression that they could find in him, but ultimately the word said that they found none. So the word said that the target became his life and his law in God. While the law of God was a demand for his life as a Jew, it was as importantly a directive for his life physically. So many, just hear this for a moment, so many form an opinion that the law of God is something that is, that is confining and, and constricting. When the truth is the law of God are lines that lead us to life, uh, borders that remind us of, of what matters. It's not necessarily something that is confining, constricting, but rather it, it, it's, it's a line of life. The law of God becomes a line of life that we live by. It's something that we discipline in our lives. It's something that we embrace in our life. It's something that we, that we repeatedly practice in our life, a border of our life that matters. They may not seem all that important now, the borders, the lines, the directives, the law of God in your life. Everybody hear me right now. It may not seem all that important right now in a season of your life that presents few challenges. But when the day comes like it did to a Daniel, when and where you are removed from what is familiar and what is comfortable and what is safe, you will want to need those lines of the law to guide you to where you can be ultimately saved. They may not seem necessary and important at this present time, but ultimately, they become the borders of your existence that show you who you are and remind you of who he is in salvation. A plan was put in place that no person could ask a petition, a request from any man or God for 30 days there in the kingdom of Babylon. They could only ask the king. Only could a petition be given to the king. And if they asked any other, the sentence would be the lion's den. They would be cast into the den of lions. The king's ego was appealed to by all the the other presidents and princes in the land that had envied Daniel. And so his ego was appealed to and the decree was signed and the law Uh, that could not be altered was then put in place. Uh, is, is, Is that not the way that we feel sometimes? At least from the man in the pulpit it is, that that our lot in life is signed and sealed, trapped in a cycle of sin, held hostage by our past or some mistake that we made along the way, convinced that, it will, that it's just always going to, to be the way that it is and it will never change or it will never get better. The decree has been signed. It's been sealed. It's, it it's, 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 it's just can't be changed. And repeated patterns make us believe that lie. Do you understand that? It's the repeated patterns of our life that make us believe that lie day after day telling us that that we don't have a right to talk to God. Anybody hearing me right now? Uh, That we don't have a right to talk to God. We failed him too many times, too many times at that same thing that we had failed him before in. And so uh, we we don't even think about asking him again to help us because we think we don't have a right to come back to the altar. We don't think we have a right to knock on the door. We've done it too many times and God is constantly disappointed with us and we just don't see any right or rhyme or reason to approach him yet again. And so the lie becomes a repetitious cycle in our life, a groove that is cut, a rut that we become stuck in, and we can't be free from. Anyone understanding this today? It's, it's, it's the same lie the devil tells us all. Everyone, hear me. It's the same lie uh, that it can't be different, and we can't be free, and we don't deserve forgiveness, and we don't deserve peace, and we don't deserve happiness, and we don't deserve joy. You've been a failure too many times. It's them that we have to remember it is not where he, the devil, tries to put us. It is where we place ourselves. Amen. 
Now when Daniel, now when Daniel knew, when he knew, everybody say when he knew. When Daniel knew the writing was signed, he went into his house and, and his windows being opened uh, in his chamber toward Jerusalem. It was an obedience to uh, it was an obedience to Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, I believe, and, and, or 2 Kings, 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, and, and that they would pray towards Jerusalem. And his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Daniel knew. He knew what was afoot. He knew, he knew, what, he knew what the plan was. He knew what would be said of him um, and what would be done. He knew the lion's den that awaited him, and yet he still did what he had done before. He simply prayed. He went to his house. He opened his windows towards Jerusalem, just like he had done so many times before, and he kneeled down and he prayed. The potential for pain still present. The problem not gone away. Presidents and princes still against him. A lion's den laying in his path ahead. But just as he had done so many times before, he opened the windows of where and what he was living in, and he prayed. This may not be profound today. There, there may not be anybody running the aisles. There may not be any grand revelation in this message to you. But if you will take this, I can guarantee you, it will change your life. It was more than just a time on the clock or even a point on the map. It was a place and a posture of his spirit. It was where you could find him. It was where you could find Daniel. It was who he was. It was the place that he prayed from peace or pain good or bad fair weather or foul it was the constant of his life god was the constant of his life all the other variables princes and, and presidents and lions dens and a strange land 500 miles from home nobody to call family he prayed it was the constant the place where we pray is where our life is made uh, it defines and determines us. It forms us to be more like Jesus. It's where the crushing takes place. It's where the, the grapes are put into the press and the wine is produced. It's where the, the clay is slammed once again on the wheel and the potter begins to turn the wheels and something is formed. The place where we pray defines us. It determines who we are. Uh, it, it's where our life is made. It forms us to be more like Jesus. Daniel opened the windows. He opened the windows and prayed. Closed windows would not have prevented, understand this, closed windows would not have prevented the prayers of Daniel, but opening them was a physical demonstration to allow a spiritual manifestation. The fact that he opened them, the demonstration, the physical act of open, opening those windows was, was a, a physical demonstration to a spiritual manifestation in his mind and heart and life. As it is written, as it is written, I have made thee a father speaking of Abraham, Looking back here in, in the book of Romans, back to the Old Testament, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which, are, which be not as though they were. God who calls those things which be not as though they were. Even when you don't see the answer yet, you keep opening the windows as if it is already happening because that prayer is who you are. Even if you don't see the provision, you still keep opening the windows. You still keep living the life. You still keep believing. You still keep praying. Because that's what defines you. That's who you are. That's what enables you. That's what makes you stand when everybody else is falling around you. Amen. You may not have your healing yet. You may not have your answer yet. It may not be better yet. They may not be saved yet, but keep opening those windows of prayer and faith because God, because God calls those things that are not yet as though they were. You see that in faith. God is speaking. Those things that are not yet, they're happening because you just keep opening the windows and you keep praying and you keep believing. You keep being faithful even when it doesn't feel good. Amen. We often pray from a, a, a place of pain and, 
and problems, and, and that is what we should do. That should be the proper response. We should, we should pray from, uh, when we are in a place of pain and problems, we should learn to pray in that, in that circumstance. For it defines what and who we trust in, and not what we will be defeated by. It tells, it tells my circumstance that my faith is more greatly fixed in the God that is greater than the circumstance that seems insurmountable before me. And so we keep praying from places of pain. Uh, but it should be as well that we do not just pray from a place of pain and problem, but we pray from the same place when there is peace. Be because prayer cannot be predicated upon strictly circumstance alone. Prayer is, is the element of our life and our nature in God that is dictated by our relationship with him in faith. That we pray when it is good and we pray when it is bad. We pray when it feels right and we pray when it doesn't feel right. Uh, we pray in the valley and we pray on the mountaintop. And, and, and we pray at church and we pray at home. And, and we pray when somebody's watching and we pray when nobody's watching. For where we pray is not conditional on things being perfect or not, but rather we pray from a place and a posture that we live in. Daniel, <laughs> Daniel went to his house. We pray from where we live. Daniel went to his house and prayed. We should be living our life out of a place of prayer to God. That's where we live. A place that calls on the name of Jesus no matter what the conditions that surround us. Look at this. Paul speaking now in the book of Acts. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. You understand that verse? Everywhere he went, the Holy Ghost was uh, affirming the fact, Paul, you've got bonds and afflictions in front of you. How difficult of a journey that would be. Right. Knowing everywhere that you would go and everything that everybody would say would tell you, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be, it's not going to be easy in front of you. The path that you're taking, Paul, you've got bonds and afflictions. You're going to be in jail. You're going to be imprisoned. It's going to be dark. It's going to be difficult. But he went on to say this. But none, none, everybody say none. none. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. You may feel, you may feel bound. You don't know what is ahead. Everybody telling you it's not looking good. Bonds and afflictions are what you've got to look forward to. But like Paul, your answer has, you've got to let your answer be from the place that you have prayed from before you ever arrive at that place, that none of these things move me. Paul could say that there in, in every city that he would encounter, every individual that would have the say prognostication of doom and gloom, Paul could say, None of these things move me because somewhere along the way before he ever arrived at the point of difficulty, he had already prayed from his house. He had already found a place to live. He had, Brother Van Diemen, he had already found a place to dwell. Like a Shunammite woman that built a, house, built a room on the side of the house in the Old Testament for the man of God, there's a place that you can put your problems. There's a place that you can put your pain. When you have a place, somebody hear me right now, somebody that has not yet found a prayer life, when you find a prayer life, you've got a place in your life where you can put those, those wounds, those, those hurts, those, those pains, those difficulties. Those, you can run there and you can put them there. You can open your window again and again and again, and God will be faithful. Where Daniel prayed from, where Daniel prayed from, put him in the lion's den. Do you know that? Sometimes the place we stand spiritually puts us at war in the spirit and the flesh. I'm not trying to be negative today, nor am I trying to give a certain sense of dread. But the moment that you decide that you are going to do something for God and be spiritual, there's going to be every opposition that will present itself to you. Because the enemy of your soul doesn't want you to gain one inch of ground easily in God. And so Daniel prayed knowing full well that with windows open, prayer being made, his sentence would be a lion's den. 
But when the morning came after that night in the den of lions, the king, the king went to the, to the opening of that den and cried out in hope for Daniel to answer from the depth of that lion's den. And Daniel lifted his voice and in so many words said, King, God has me still standing. Look at this. Sometimes our faith is best demonstrated and our greatest victory is not in advancing, but in defending, just in the ability to say, by the grace of God, I'm still standing, I'm still here. <laughs> Daniel was still standing. He first kneeled. Where you, where you pray from determines who you will ultimately be. Daniel was still standing because he first kneeled. Um, our greatest example, Jesus went alone to pray often, musicians, if you would. If Jesus did it, if my Savior, the perfect one, did it, if he went alone to a place to pray often, how much more should this corruptible, piece of flesh that I am, pray. If he did it often, Brother Lucas, how much more should I do it? If my example needed to go find a place and leave everything else behind, then how much more should I be praying in my life? Because it's the place that we pray from that will de determine ultimately who we are and where we will be. So I'm asking somebody today, open your windows. Open your windows, get, get a hold of your answer and don't let go. Tell your lion, as a matter of fact, tell your lion that he is now in a den full of Daniels. Stop thinking that you're outnumbered. Stop thinking that your pain that will be present for the rest of your existence. And if it is, if God never chooses to heal you, if God never chooses to change your circumstance, it does not change God. If God never makes it better, find a place to open some windows because he becomes your everything. <laughs> open your windows. Get a hold of your answer and don't let go. It is the place you pray from, the you and I that identifies with him, the great I am, the only one that we live for who can save us, Jesus. For you and I to stand then, Come on, I'm, I'm looking at some gray-headed people in this house. You're still standing. And, and I'll be honest with you, there are Sundays sometimes, that's, that's when I come to this pulpit, that's, that's just the thought and the prayer in my mind. I'm still here. Anybody? I'm still standing. I may not be leaping tall buildings in a single bound. I, I may not be bulletproof and Teflon and nothing sticks to me. I may be weak and frail and, and just barely get into the pulpit in my head. You following me, anybody? Maybe you walked in and you walk in every Sunday and you're just lighter than a feather. Not me. There's some days it's like I got mud on my boots, but I want you to know, while I have breath in my body, I will yet praise him. While I have strength, I'm going to stand and I'm going to worship him. I'm going to keep opening the windows as long as my arms can crank them open. I'm going to keep kneeling in prayer because I know if I can do it now, then I will be able to stand then. I, I, if, if I can just, uh, if anything, I, I want my identity, I want my identity to be the place I pray from. Amen. If at the end of my days, I don't care about my name, I just care about his name. Amen. I just, I just want to stand. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. That's what the word said. If anybody disagreed with me about that comment a while ago that sometimes we are, our greatest victory is in defending, not advancing. It's the word. Because the word said this, having done all to stand, stand. Therefore, 
having your loins girt about with truth, your, the helmet of salvation on, the, the breastplate of righteousness, your, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and the sword of the Spirit. Sometimes your best, your best and greatest victory is just learning to stand there in God and know that you have a place that you pray from. You have windows that are open. You have a home. You have a life. You have something in God that cannot be defeated. Come on, if the enemy's had you on the run, don't run anymore. Stand up and say, God, I will pray. I will believe. I will have hope. Come on, somebody stand with me all over this house right now and begin to walk to this altar and begin to bring your life and your need and your home and your house and, and open those windows yet again and pray from that place that may be filled with pain and problems, but remind yourself and know that in God, he will prevail. And the enemy that is before you Ah, uh, the God is greater that is within you. <laughs> Come on, somebody pray right now as they begin to sing and we begin to believe and we have hope again and come and repent of your sins and be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with his spirit today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, it is who we are.